guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock and it's time for another video. Today, I'm going to be doing a video all about the 10 best utility items for magicians of all time. Now, we always talk about the latest trick and the latest book and the latest download, and that's all well and good because let's be honest, we're magicians, it's all about the tricks, right? But I think it's really important to talk about utility items as well. Stuff that we don't necessarily think of as being important, but oh my gosh, it is important. There's thousands of utilities out there, thousands of different things that you can use in multiple different ways. Today, I have on this list the 10 best utility items that every magician must own. If you haven't seen any of these, you need to get them right away. You need to go and buy these right away because these are awesome. Without further ado, let's count down the 10 best utility items for magicians of all time. In 10th position, we have the Himba Wallet. I've got to be honest, I think a lot of magicians overlook the Himba Wallet or the Z Fold Wallet. I think with all the latest wallets that come out, like the Nexus Wallet and the Shadow Wallet and the Orphic Wallet, even though the Orphic Wallet has a kind of a Himba type thing built into it, but people tend to forget how good the Himba Wallet is, the Z Fold Wallet is. I have created literally dozens of routines with a Z-Fold wallet. And if you've seen my Vanishing Ink Masterclass, you'll have seen a couple of those on there. If you've gone and looked at Netrix, you know there's a couple on there. I even put a routine on my uh, Penguin Live lecture with a Himba wallet. I think that the uses of a Himba wallet are incredible. There's so much that you can do with them. And I think a lot of people overlook the Himba wallet. They just think of it as a way to do a multiple out for a Quran deck or something. But there is so much more you can do with it. The nice thing is a Himba wallet just fits in your pocket. It's ready to go and you can use it for mentalism. You can use it for magic. You can use it for playing cards. You can use it for money. The, the sky's the limit. And I think that for really creative people, if you've got a Himba wallet and you sit it down in front of you and then you just go, right, what can I come up with this? I think you'll have a lot of scope. In fact, I've been speaking to Peter Nardi at Alakazam about potentially doing a Himba wallet uh, kind of project, a bit like I have with other things in the past, and do like a massive teaching and stuff you can do with it. I think that that would be a really good idea, something that maybe I'll do in the future. But there's a ton of material out there already. If you want a really good wallet that you can carry around with you that's capable of doing so much more than just a normal card to wallet, I'd recommend having a look into a Z Fold wallet or a Himba wallet and consider adding that to your repertoire. So in 10th place, we have the humble Z Fold stroke Himba wallet. Let's move on to number nine. In ninth position, we have the Toppet. Now, I'm going to be honest with you right now. I think the greatest practitioner of the Toppet is David Penn. I think that nobody does the Toppet better than David Penn. And World Magic Shop actually sell David Penn's course on the Toppet as well as his own personal Toppet. I've seen him do that. He won the Magic Circle Close Up Magician of the Year using the Toppet. His routines are incredible. Circle to the Fourth Dimension is still, in my opinion, one of the best coin routines of all time. Uh, his Salt Vanish is just just great. But over the years, there's been so many people that have used Toppets. you got Patrick Page. He was incredible with the Toppet. So was Michael Lamar. The list goes on and on. Now, if you don't know what a Toppet is, because it's not one of those sexy new tricks that come out all the time, is it? It's It's been around for a very long time. And because of that, a lot of newer magicians don't even know what a Toppet is. If you've never heard of a Toppet before, it's basically a bag inside your jacket. So if you wear a jacket to a gig, it's a bag that goes inside your jacket that allows you to vanish things by putting it inside the bag. Now, there's various different ways that you can actually do this. Michael Lamar and Patrick Page used to have a very animated style when using the Toppet. So they'd be literally throwing it in during the course of a gesture and it would look incredible. It would look like boom. I remember seeing uh, uh, Patrick Page vanish a pint glass into a Toppet and I was just blown away. David tends to use it in a totally different way. Ten David tends to use it as more of a misdirection type thing. So as he's reaching for something over here, the toppeting is taking place when people aren't looking. However you use it, it's such an incredible prop. Now, you can have it so that it just goes into a bag and just stays there and you can take it out when you've finished your performance. Michael Lamar, I think it was Michael Lamar, had an incredible Toppet design. I think you can get it off his website that you have sewn into your jacket and it's still got the same Toppet design inside your jacket, but you can actually access the Toppet from your, from, your, uh, from your outside jacket pocket. So you can reach into there and take out whatever. You, so you can vanish something over here and then have it come out your pocket or palm it out your pocket, whatever you want to do. 
However you want to use it, the Toppet is incredible. I remember being told, I don't know if this is true, but the Toppet was originated by shoplifters who used to just shove stuff into the Toppet when people weren't looking. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I do think that it's a crying shame that more magicians don't use the Toppet. If you're putting a routine together and you're looking for um, you know, a visual vanish of something, for example, Toppeting is the way to go. And I, 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 I highly doubt anybody who's seen it done right and watch people like David Penn and Michael Amar and Patrick Page. And if you've seen it done right, you're going to want one because they really do look incredible and it allows you to perform so many amazing magic tricks. So in ninth position, we have the top. In eighth position, we have the humble double-backed card. Whether we're talking about a, a blue-blue, a red-red, or a blue-red, the humble double-backed card is superb it really is um there's so much you can do with a double back card and over the years i've published dozens of routines with double back cards just on my vanishing ink Masterclass recently i published like two or three routines on the gaffed card section there's a couple of routines up on the net tricks and i'll tell you right now there's a whole bunch of stuff coming out with rsvp on the rsvp online platform in the coming weeks and months i don't know when russ is dropping that but it will be happening at some point you throw a double back backer into your deck and you can do so much with it. Now I typically will have the double backer under the cellophane in the box and I'll have it sitting there for when I need it and then I'll add it to the deck when I need it. But you know just think about it the force alone. You do a crisp force and um it's, it's one of the cleanest forces you can do. You know, I've seen Ryland go to close-up jobs and do a crisp force four times in a row and do a four ace production, and, and, and people are just blown away. Then you throw into the fact that it makes Ambitious Card a million times better. You know, at the end of the day, it was using a double backer that helped Di Vernon fool Houdini. Um, there's so much you can do with a double-backed card, and it really is limited only by your imagination. The sad thing is most magicians have double-backers sitting around their house, and they tend not to do anything with it. It's one of those things that comes in a penguin deck, and you just take it and you put it to one side. But if you just kept it in your deck, you could do so much. Start with my Vanishing Ink Masterclass. Go and start with that. There's a few routines with a double-backed card on there. Uh, but beyond that, there's so many other things that you can do with it as well. But there you go. It's called uh, a double-backed card. Everybody's got one. Very few people do anything with it. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see a really awesome routine with a double-backed card, go check, off, go check out Back Off, um, which you can get on the Netflix and you can get on RSVP online. Anyway, let's move on. In the seventh position, in position number seven, we have Tool by David Stone. Now, what is Tool? Well, Tool is a gimmicked card box that allows you to do absolute miracles. And for a long time, I used Tool exclusively. Every single one of my card boxes was Tool. These days, I still use Tool, but there's another card box that I tend to use that's, from, in my opinion, an even better utility item. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, but Tool is still absolutely brilliant. One of the nice things about tool is it allows you to do visual magic very very easily if you haven't seen tool before you could take a a card for example uh rip it up into bits put it on top of the deck just tap it with the box and instantly it restore there's a million different things that you can do with tool and the the dvd that comes with it it goes through so many different ideas. And the nice thing is it's just one card and one box and you're ready to do so many miracles. Now, uh, the problem with Tool, not that there's a problem, but uh, the issue with it is it came out a long, long time ago. And because it came out a long, long time ago, a lot of people haven't even heard of it and don't even know how, what it is. And, and so a lot of people aren't aware of it and don't use it. I guarantee you right now, if David Stone bought out Tool today and nobody had heard of it, it would be one of the best selling tricks of the year. Stop looking for the latest and greatest magic and go and check out Tool by David Stone. Now, one thing that all of these utility items have in common is they nurture creativity. Because even though Tool comes with some great routines, there's so much more that you can do with it if you just think through. If you just think, right, what do I have here? I have this and I have this. What can I use these two items for? And how can I use it to create near miracles? And then you just kind of put it all together. But honestly, Tool is going to excite. If you haven't seen it, it's brilliant. Go and get yourself Tool by David Stone. 
Okay, so next up we have an item by Sans Mines, but it's still available everywhere. I checked Penguin and Murphy's and a bunch of places. You can still get this. Uh, now, Sans Mines don't have the greatest reputation of all time. I do tend to find, however, that Sans Mines either have some great stuff or some terrible stuff. And it was mainly terrible, but you know, you do have some good tricks from Sans Mines. And the trick I'm going to talk about right now is the Silent Assistant. Now, what is the Silent Assistant? Well, basically, it's a way of being able to have a magnet on your finger without actually using a magnetic ring. Now, obviously, PK rings were really popular. You know, the wizard PK ring from back in the day. And these days, there's so many more PK rings. PK rings were really popular back in the day. And, you know, Charlie Justice's Prohibition, which for me is one of the greatest capping bottles of all time, used a um, used used a, a PK ring. Uh, unfortunately, I never got on with the PK ring. I don't wear jewellery. I don't know if you've noticed. I'm married, but I don't wear any rings. And the reason is I'm a coin magician. I do a lot of coin magic. And having rings on when you're doing coin magic is not a good situation. It's not something you want to be in. So I don't use rings really at all. Um, and, uh, you know, I've seen tricks in the past where you have a magnet and it's got a plaster over it and you've got a plaster on your finger and that that's no good at all either. What a silent assistant is basically is it's a one finger sonata gimmick. So imagine a thumb tip that runs across the whole middle finger, but it's just on this side. It's just there. Now it's so easy to get into because you just put your hand in your pocket, you slip it onto your finger and you're good to go. But what it allows you to do, there's a super powerful magnet in there. So in essence, just by putting your hand in your pocket and bringing it out, your hands look empty, but you've got a magnet in play for when you need it, and then you can ditch it very, very easily as well. So if you like Prohibition, but you've been put off doing it because of the PK ring, well, now you can do Prohibition. If you don't know what Charlie Justice's Prohibition is, go and check it out. But basically, in essence, it's the best capping bottle you'll see. Um, Justin Miller's Captured is very good as well. I mean, Justin Miller might get the edge, but I mean, Prohibition by Charlie Justice is brilliant. And I did it for years and years and years. Still do it to this day. It's one of my most viewed videos on TikTok. Um, but there's so much more that you can use a magnet on your hand for. So many different routines, so many different concepts. And the best way to do it, in my opinion, is the Silent Assassin. The routine comes with a few, you know, the trick comes with a few routines, a few ideas, which is great. But just like everything else on this list, having a Silent Assassin is a great way to nurture creativity. You put it in front of you and you go, right, I've got this ability to have a magnet on my hand. How can I use that and what can I use it for? So, uh, and again, like a lot of things on this list, it's very, very old. So a lot of people aren't aware of it, but you can use it to perform near miracles. So Silence Assassin by uh, Sans Mind Magic. Let's move on. Okay, so next up, we have Six Outs by Blake Voigt. Now, what is Six Outs by Blake Voigt? It is, in essence, in my opinion, the best multiple out system on the market. It allows you to have six outs. You basically show you've got an envelope. Now, you've got a mini version and you've got a stage version, but it allows you to have an envelope. You can do this close-up. You can do it on stage. You can do it whenever. You open up the envelope, and then inside, there's a piece of paper. You take the piece of paper out. It's Tyvek. You take the piece of paper out. You open up the piece of paper and when you show the piece of paper it's got one of six outs written on it now there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually use this there's tons of different ways you can use it and um, Blake gives you a few ideas and uh, there's a few really good ideas Blake has got a very interesting chair test that he uses this for which is really good and works really well um, but really if you've got a, a trick that requires six outs then, you know, I can't think of a better way to deal with it than this. It's a little envelope that fits in your pocket. It's big enough to be done to an audience, uh, to a big audience. It's small enough to work close up. There's not really any angle issues to speak of. And it's really strong. <clears throat> I'll even tell you what I use it for. I've got my, well, I've got a number of them. But one of my six outs, the one that I use an awful lot, is set up um, with six Tom Cruise films. Because I realized a few years ago that if you ask somebody to name a Tom Cruise film, they typically name only one of six Tom Cruise films. I'll let you work out which ones those are, but I'm sure you can guess. If you go look at, if you're Facebook friends with me and you go look about four years ago, you'll see a Facebook post where I go, name a Tom Cruise film. That was when I was doing research for this. Um, so what I do is I use something like Celebrity Prestige or Digital Force Bag to force Tom Cruise. I put the envelope down on the table for a begin from the beginning, and then when I forced it, I don't tell them to say the name of the celebrity. I say, now think of a film that celebrity is in that everybody would know. I then tell them that I'm going to show them the difference between mind reading and prediction, and I then read their mind and tell them Tom Cruise, 
And then I say, but here's the thing, this envelope's been here the whole time. Name the film that you were just thinking of. They say Mission Impossible, for example, and I open it and I show that inside there is Mission Impossible. That's one way you can use it. I like that version because there feels like there's more than six outs because think about it, how many films has Tom Cruise done? And also, there were like 100 celebrities you could pick from. So, and how many celebrity films have those celebrities been in? The options are literally in the tens of thousands, but in reality, you've whittled it down to six possible outs. Either way, Blake Voigt's six outs is, in my opinion, the most commercial and the best utility item to do a multiple out routine that I've ever seen. Let's move on. That's not going to be the only trick, by the way, by Blake Voigt on this list. Okay, so next up, you have Perfect Score by John Allen. Perfect Score by John Allen. Perfect Score by John Allen is something that should be in the uh, that should be in the gig bag or in the crafting bag of every single magician on the planet. What it is is it is a device that you put down on your table, and it allows you to within a couple of seconds take a playing card and score it so that you cannot tell it's been scored, but it is the perfect score for a, for a Mercury card fold. Now, we've all seen those Mercury card folds where you do the Mercury card fold and it looks nothing like the card that you're actually switching it out from. And the reason is when you do it under pressure, sometimes your Mercury card fold can look less than brilliant, right? Well, what you can do with perfect score is you can take a deck of cards and within like literally five minutes, you can score the entire deck. So every single card is perfectly scored. It doesn't get in the way of any slights that you want to do. It doesn't get in the way of any routines. But it means that when you do that Mercury card fold, it's going to be perfect every single time. If you do a Mercury card fold, you need this. If you do a Mercury card fold and you've ever done a Mercury card fold and it's been less than perfect, you need this. I've got the worst Mercury card fold in the world. It's terrible. It was pretty good. And then I got... Uh, perfect uh, score and now it's terrible because it doesn't need to be good because perfect score does all the work for me it's a great prop well worth getting you can get it directly from john allen it's one of the best utility items you can get and if you do card magic and you use a uh, a um you know you use the mercury card fold you really need to get perfect score now we are into the top three i believe i think we're into the top three yes we are we're into the top three so in third place we have the thumb tip Thumb tip. I don't know what else to say about this. Every single magician and their brother and their uncle and their sister and their mother, everybody has got a thumb tip, right? The sad fact is most magicians don't do anything with it or they're just, they're worried about it because it's been exposed to lay people. I use thumb tips all of the time. And, you know, for those magicians that are worried about using it, thinking they're going to get caught with a fake thumb, they're really not. I've had people turn around to me in a gig and say, oh, yeah, are you one of those magicians that use a fake thumb? And then I've gone and used a thumb tip and they aren't even aware of it. I remember seeing Pat Page years ago and he did a thumb tip with a, he used a, he did a silk vanish with a thumb, with a matchbox cover instead of a thumb tip. And it looked amazing. And it was then that I realized, and he's, I've seen him do it since with bright green thumb tips and stuff. And it made me realize that it's not really about whether people can see the thumb tip, because if you do anything with a thumb tip correctly, they're not going to even notice it's there because it's not like you're permanently going to go, hey, my hands are empty. Watch this. It's not like that. Learn how to use the thumb tip properly and you'll never get caught. But you, also, if you're just using it to vanish a silk, you are scratching the surface of what this incredible gimmick is capable of. $100 bill switch is a perfect example. David Williamson's salt routine, which in my opinion is the greatest salt routine ever made. Um, Richard Sanders' bill in uh, uh, Sharpie, which is still, for my money, the best bill in Sharpie routine that I've ever seen. The list goes on and on and on. Um, honestly, I can't say enough good things about a thumb tip. I am at some point going to do the hows and whys of the thumb tip. I think that would be a really good thing to do. I'm trying to encourage more people to use it and more people to get out there and do it. But for now, trust me, third place is the thumb tip. If you've got one and it's sitting in your bottom drawer, get it out, do a bit of research and see what you can do with it. I'm going to do a hows and whys video, but while we're waiting, go out and use the thumb tip. It's brilliant. In second place... We have The Boom Box by Penguin Magic and Andrew Niner. The Boom Box by Penguin Magic and Andrew Niner. The Boom Box is incredible. I was lucky enough to be a part of the Boom Box project when it came out. And I was so pleased to be a part of it because it is an incredible, 
incredible utility device. I can't understand why people wouldn't just have every single deck of cards in a boombox. Um, I don't use Tool as much as I did now because I use a boombox instead. The boombox is brilliant. And, and you know, my favorite routines are on the project. Go and buy a boombox, have a look at the tutorial, have a look at the reactions and the people that I perform the boombox to, and you'll see how good this trick is. It is incredible. Uh, there's so much you can do with it. The card to box is brilliant. There's an any card at any number, which is still, in my opinion, just such a strong any card at any number. There's so many different routines with, with the trick. Doodle, which is the drawing duplication, um, is just killer. I mean, so many different ways of actually, um, of, of, you know, so many different ways of actually using this thing. It basically is there when you need it. And if you don't need it, it just disappears. It's the perfect utility device because it's on hand to be used at any point. But if you're not going to use it, it just disappears and nobody's even aware that it's there. It's brilliant. It's called Boombox. It's by Andrew Niner. Andrew is a genius. That's all I've got to say about that. The guy's a genius. Look out, 2023. It's Andrew Niner's year. I'm telling you right now. But Boombox, second best trick of the year. Second best trick of the year. This isn't the trick of the year list. What am I talking about? Second best, second best utility item of all time. So you're probably wondering, what's the best utility item of all time? Well, you're about to find out. So the best utility item of all time, the absolute best utility item of all time is the Acro Index card by Blake Voice. Now, I use the Acro Index card for so many different th ways. Basically, it's a flap card built into an index card. You can get a thick version, a big thick version for stage, and a small thin version you can carry around in your pocket. You've got the normal Acro Index, which is where you write on it, and when you write on it, that's it. It's set up for that particular routine. And then there's the, uh, there's the dry erase Acro Index, where you can write on it, and then you can wipe it off and write something else on and write something else on. Man, the Acro Index is great. I use it for so many different routines, including me and Ryland both use it for Cody Fisher's comedy book test. If you've seen Cody Fisher's comedy book test, the bit where it's based on the Wayne Dobson routine with eat and fart and so on and so forth. Um, uh, that, that we use an Acro Index card for that. But then there's a bunch of other things. If you follow Ryland on Instagram, you'll see he's got like a million different Acro Index. Every week he's got another Acro Index routine. All right, okay, so we can do something else with an Acro Index card this time, are we? Including something that he does in his show, which is which you can get from Blake's site, which is six cards. And you have somebody name a, uh, name a number. They're all numbered one to six. When you take that number out, They've won a stick of gum and everything else has money on it. I mean, it is such a strong, strong, and it's the perfect way to do that. It's the perfect way to do that. It's even better than Oraculum. It's even better than all the other different ways of achieving the same thing. Um, but that's just scratching the surface. It's great. Acro Index is the best utility item of all time. Get one, sit it down, and think of the million different ways that you can use it. It's brilliant. So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. That's the 10 best utility items of all time, or at least in my opinion. Now it's over to you. What do you think? Do you agree with this list? Do you disagree? Is there something that should be on this list but isn't, in which case I'd like to know? Or is there something on this list that you you uh, disagree with that you think, no, that shouldn't be on the list? Is there something on this list that you do all the time that you get great reactions from or something that you couldn't live without? I want to know. Let's get a dialogue going down below. Also, don't forget, if you want to join the Netrix, please do so by going to www www.thenetrix.com. That's www.thenetrix.com. You get access to everything immediately, hundreds of tricks, and more being added all the time. Anyway, thank you once again for watching. I will see you again soon, right here on Magic TV. I hope you have an amazing day, and thank you for watching this video.